guys, so my name is Adrian and I'm from 403 Performance and uh, I'll be working on Speed Academy's engine today. Uh, I just got this machined to an 85.5 mil bore. Uh, we're going to go with some JE pistons. Um, they went with a K1 billet crank, which is a pretty nice piece. Um, they got some K1 H beam rods. So I've already done the clearances on the mains, the rods. Um, I was just going to show you guys on camera how to do all this stuff, like, you know, check your main bearing clearance, your rod bearing clearance, uh, check the machine shops work. So yeah, I think we'll just get right into it. I'll probably start off with um, measuring the crankshaft main journals. So I'm going to only show you guys the first three. Um, I've obviously checked the last two. Um, to check the last two, I mean, you would take it off and you put it on the table. So yeah, further ado, let's check these clearances. They should all be around 2,000. A little 1.9 on that guy. That's acceptable. Always aiming for two. All right, let's get this guy here. Let's get about 2.1 on that guy. And this guy, we got two point little under 2.2. So we're gonna take off the girdle and make sure you do it in the right sequence. So I'll we'll pull this guy out. Here. And uh, one thing I want to mention is I like to put these guys on here so you don't Nick the main journals when you're putting the crank in, in case you have any accidents. These just come with head studs, so I like to keep these whenever I get them. I just pulled these thrust washers out. They're actually pretty dirty. It's a good idea to clean everything when you get it from the manufacturer. So I like to put a little dab of oil just on the inside here, kind of keeps it stuck to the block. So these guys go in like so. And one thing you don't want to do is uh, I've actually seen people do this. Put these in backwards. Your crankshaft will last probably 30 minutes of runtime. So grab this guy with a little bit of oil. You gotta make sure you always have the slots on the outside or your crankshaft will not get oil there. All right. Got these guys in. I like to uh, use lots of assembly grease. Some people think you can use too much. I don't really think that's possible. So we got this crank nice and clean. You gotta make sure to keep things extremely clean. So this is very annoying. Sometimes lining up the thrust washers can be a little bit of a task here. All right. Okay. So very cute. Line this guy. Get a rubber rubber hammer, a rubber mallet, and tap it into place. So this thing spins like butter. This is real good. Main line is perfectly centered so we're going to tighten this girdle down here i like to just get these semi tight before i start torquing all right bring it up to 60 this is the last one some people just torque straight to 60 but Picture here. Check the crank end play. So, rotate the sky. Sky. So, 
so. All right, so that's zero right there. What do you think we're gonna get three? Mm, three and a half. Three and a half, pretty good. So that's usually exactly what I aim for. Good job on ACL. So can you see that? Can you get mm -hmm. that on camera there? Yeah. So that's perfect. Okay, so uh, we've got the crank in. Spins really nice. Um, what we're gonna do next is put the torque plate on and uh, I can just show you um, the machine work. See how straight the bars are, and then uh, we'll start gaffing the rings. So. All right, so we're just gonna torque this up. Stages. So we got the uh, torque plate on here. We're just gonna check the bores, see how straight they are. So, let's figure it out, actually. So if this was done without a torque plate, you'd see almost half a thou to one thou difference. So about two ten thou difference on this axis. Okay, so we got the first three piston rings here, and uh, we're just going to show you what we do on the uh, fourth one here. So I was just going to say, if you're uh, if you're ever using your uh, piston as a guide. You can put your first compression ring on your second here, and then um, yeah, you can use this, and then gap it, and then pop it off. Put the second one on, use it as a guide again. Okay, so I was gonna say I'll start off with uh, just just a light deburr rings here. I'm gonna remove about five. Six out of starts. Try and center it a bit. Drop it down the bore. So as you do two two on the second ring, so this is at this is just one six. So we're not quite there. So 0.19. So I'm gonna open that up about three thou. So I removed a bit more material off this. So perfect, perfect fit. Two two. So that's perfect. Okay, so we got the uh, last ring gapped. So I just want to point out that um, top rings are all gapped to 0 0.018 and 0 0.022 for the bottom ring. We're just putting in the last piston here. Um, something I forgot to show you guys is um, rod bolt stretch. So I always check this on every rod before I uh, actually install it to the pistons. But what you do here is you would zero this out, all right? So, so that was non-tang so. so, so 
that was just 45 foot pounds. So I just want to show, as you can see, that doesn't torque enough. You want these guys, you want about five thou, five, two, three, five and a half thou. So I'd add about two foot pounds. I should get it, so I'll try again. Of course, with a compressor sleeve. So we're gonna put the last rod cap on now. I was gonna make sure the tangs line up. I've seen people do that before in the uh, big end seizes. So I actually only use the uh, Carrillo lube. I find it's a little bit better than the Ultra Torque. So we will torque this to 47 foot pounds and then be right back. So we got the last rod cap torqued down to 47 foot pounds and we got the stretch good. Perfect. So pull it off here and uh, yeah, this thing spins pretty nicely. Sweet. So this is the final product. You got everything finished up. This motor turns over really nicely. Yeah, I think uh, next we can go over the build sheet, which kind of has all the clearances and specs. And uh, yeah, that might be able to help out other people who are building their own engines and they're just kind of wondering what clearances to go with. So, um, I just thought I'd include this part to help a few other people out who are building their own engines. Um, so kind of go over the clearances I used on it. Um, this is an 85 and a half mil bore. So regarding piston rings, um, I'd usually go 0 0.018 on the top and 0 0.022 on the bottom. Um, if I went to say a larger bore, like an 87 mil on a 4G64, I'd maybe do, you know, 0 0.020 top ring, 0 0.0324 bottom ring. Um, yeah, so rod bearing clearances, um, I mean, it can vary quite a bit. On an engine, I'd say it's, that might see 600 horsepower. I do between 2.2 to 2.5 thou on the rods. Uh, mains, I usually stick between 2 and 2.5 and thou. So on this guy, we got uh, number one was 2.5 thou, number two was 2.4, number three was 2.5, number four was 2.4. So pretty close. Uh, the main bearings on this guy was two and a half thou, number one, number two is two and a half thou, number three, two point three, number four, two point three, number five, two point three. Uh, crank end play came out pretty pretty nice on this. This was uh, three and a half thou. The idea is you usually don't want to go larger on the mains in my opinion because you end up losing uh, a lot of pressure to the rods. So I don't know. I've never uh, I haven't had problems with these clearances so I just continue to use them so yeah